It's as old as prostitution, man. And it's very important to keep alive and, and make that you know, separation between the beauty parlor and the traditional barbershop. I'm Donnie Hawley, the uh, founder of Hollywood's Barbershop and Shaving Parlor. Uh, Matt Tracy, I'm a barber at Hollywood's Barbershop. I've been a barber for about 15 years, worked here for about six years of it. Me and my buddy, when we were like 13, started chopping each other up underneath the tree in front of my parents' house, and just kind of went from there, man. It's been doing it for more than half my life, I guess. <laughs> it's been a minute. Yeah, my name is Gabe Lovano. I am a full-time barber here at Barbier Shop. I've been in the profession for a little over two and a half years. I've been cutting my own hair for almost 14, 15 years. Hi, my name is George Mendoza, and I'm the owner of American Barber Shop. I have been a barber Cosmo since 1998. My name is Mike. I'm a barber at American Barber Shop, and I've been cutting hair for 10 years. I actually fell into becoming a barber. Um, originally, I wanted to become an architect. And as a young boy, I used to sweep up a barber shop. My uncle's actually a barber. One day I was in there and I started sweeping up hair. And I asked them if they needed a barber boy to kind of clean up the tools, you know, clean up the shop. And that kind of started as my part-time job instead of doing a, you know, a paper route or anything like that. And I stayed consistent with that for a while. Well, once I started cutting hair, little by little, I just fell in love with it. And now here I am. My name is Worm. Uh, I work at American Barber Shop. I've been a barber licensed for two years, and I've been cutting hair for 10 years. You know, I just got into it for fun, taking care of my family and some friends, and I just ran with it. It's a passion that I developed throughout the years, and there's nothing else that I would like to do besides this. Uh, we actually, as barbers, our specialty is men's grooming, shaving, um, men's haircutting, so everything related to men's. Or any men's haircut done properly. It just won't happen in a salon. And, um, you know, barbering, you go to barber college and you focus on gentlemen's cuts, tapers, uh, high and tight, low and tight, flat tops, um, hot towel shaves. And you, you don't do women's cuts, color, makeup, any of that in barber college. It's a different license and um, you cannot legally use a straight razor if you have a cosmetologist license. I'll never forget the day when this man came in and, and he traditionally got a very short shaved, um, as we call it, a fade on the side of his head. He was probably a police officer. And they sat there for an hour and a half doing scissor over comb, trying to give this guy like a military style haircut. I mean, I was crawling out of my skin. And I remember asking the hairdresser, for God's sake, just pick up a clipper, take a zero to the side of his head. You're going to cut his, his ear off. And I'll never forget this, and it was actually insulting. The, the hairdresser, which was a hot shot at the time, was, you know, we don't use clippers. Clippers are ghetto. Clippers are barbershop. We don't use clippers. They have their specialty, uh, their expertise, and then we have ours. And we've preserved that traditional uh, aspect of, of our history. Well, the barber pole, that's always, as a barber, you'll be surprised. I want to say 90% of barbers that get asked the question, what does a barber pole mean? We always freeze up because there's a million explanations. And barbers used to be, you know, the, our first doctors, man. Barbers were uh, uh, surgeon assistants. Uh, they assisted in bloodletting procedures. Imagine this, you go into a barber shop, the barber hands you a, like a staff or, a, or a, like a stick to, to grip onto so that your veins pop out. They would puncture your skin either with, an, like, like a, with a razor or a needle and they would literally bloodlet you. Change your blood out through bloodletting that you were healthy that way. A barber pole, back in the day, barber poles used to be red and white which was pretty interesting. Because everyone knows a barber pole as a red, white, and blue. It is a piece of Americana, however, it's not to symbolize uh, anything really to do with America. The red in the barber poles for the blood, because they were doctors. And the white, from what I was told, is the bandages they would wrap around your arm. And the blue is to represent the veins, obviously, that had been cut. Years ago, you would actually drive by the barber shop and you would see towels hanging around a pole sitting outside which obviously in modern days, I mean, you can't have bloody towels sitting outside a barbershop, so eventually 
the, the towels were represented by, by a painted bowl. Little do many people know that George Washington actually died at the hands of a barber surgeon. So there's a rich history there, and that's, that's really what it symbolizes. And so that's how we know it as to be today. A uh, barber pole is, is where men go to get haircuts. I feel that the importance of a barbershop, especially in nowadays society, um, we're in a society of very big, I, I would say, social disconnect. Um, a lot of people now with social media, everybody's hooked on their phone. Most days when you walk around, you see everybody looking down, nobody's looking up anymore. You know, a barbershop is really a third place. It's, it's uh, first place is your home. You know, second place would be work. And third place, I've always said, is where you come to talk shit about the people at the first and second place. And one thing, you know, I always tell people, a barbershop is like a, a safe haven for men. Like, this is our man cave. You know, like, this is corporate America could never change what happens inside a barbershop. You know, there's a lot of corporate chains that are now trying to kind of uh, replicate a barbershop. You know, they might have the same barber pole, the same toolboxes the barber chairs, but they can't replicate the vibe and the atmosphere in a barbershop unless, unless you're a real barber and, or unless your heart is in the barber industry. You know, it's one of uh, America's oldest traditions and men, you know, come in here to sometimes learn about the latest fashions, sports, you know, some guy-to-guy -guy advice. It's a pastime and it's something that's very dear to, you know, our culture and our society. It's where you can come and relieve the day's stress, uh, uh, get away from the anxieties that you've had maybe in life. And sometimes it's just good to have a good laugh. You know, you, you get updated with your fashion and you can feel comfortable with just being yourself. My, my female client that brings her son in here, she used to take her son to a salon. And she was telling me the other day that she, she absolutely will not take her boys to a salon anymore because she feels that the barbershop is somewhere important for them to come to as young boys. She feels like, and it was really cool, and it was a, quite a compliment. She's like, you know, my kids are going to grow up, and they're always going to remember you guys. They're going to remember the conversations they had with their barber. And I think that's such a huge part of a young, young man or a young boy growing up is to have those memories of, of being in a, in a masculine place and having conversations with, with an older guy that could, that could give you advice. There's something about it, getting a haircut that just it brings a, a sense of confidence into a man, whether it be for an interview, a big date, um, a family gathering, or sometimes it's unfortunate, sometimes it's a funeral, but you still have an importance. There's such an importance placed into a haircut, and there's a significance to it that a lot of people, whether they realize it or not, they, they do carry that upon themselves. It's, a, it's an expression of one's style. And so connecting with the men in our community is really what we are and what we do, and it's exciting that barbershops have become important again because men need it. You know, we've lost maybe some sense of our masculinity or some sense of our role in society um, with women being able to have like all women gyms and, and, and all these type of places where like guys aren't allowed, you know, we, we, we need a place too, you know, so barbershops is where you come to look good, feel good, hang out, and, and honestly the connection that you have with uh, your clients is, you know, some of these guys have become some of my best friends, you know.